Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well, I'm doing fantastically well, because you probably already know, I had the immense opportunity and luck to speak and share a live together with Hans Nicolussi Caviglia on the Juventus Twitch channel, it was just fantastic, extremely fantastic, 35-40 minutes where we spoke about everything and nothing, and you know it, as it was in Italian, now a few hours later, after re-watching it, after reading again, I want to translate it so that you are also aware about what he said, but more than just reading it, I want to tell you the the small things that you can't just read, his facial, facial expression and so on and so on, because it was just really a great life. You know it, before speaking and translating what he said, I want to share my feelings, my opinions about it. I'm always and equally honored when Juventus is giving me the trust to speak with someone from Juventus, a next-gen player under 19 from Primavera, uh, a, a manager like Joe Montemuro, coach uh, Brambrilla, the Juventus women, first team players for me. There is no difference. I'm super honored that Juventus trust me in doing it and I always want to do the best I can to deliver the best possible life for the people that are watching, the Juventini. Well, sometimes there are some lives that I want to do even more than the other ones, like Hans Nicolusi Caviglia, for a simple reason. Do you remember during the summer how many times I mentioned his name, how much I spoke about him? Because I told you a lot of time, if there was for me an MVP of that preseason, it was Hans. I wrote about it on Twitter. I made a top five of my players, or according to me, the one that impressed me the most with Cambiaso in second position, there were another ranking, and then number one, Hans Nicolussi, that he also liked, he wrote me also a thank you on Twitter, so it was just nice, and I really wanted to speak with him, also because it's a player that has more to tell, that we actually know, a player with a deep history, someone that arrived at Juventus when he was eight years old, so someone that really knows Juventus in good and bad times, he was loaned out, he had that injury, so he, he, he had like you know, a 360 overview of what Juventus is. And I'm sure that when I'm doing these kind of interviews with someone like that, I'm sure that it will be a really nice life. I have to say, first of all, that I was extremely impressed, not by the player, because I know the player. I saw him playing at Salernitana, Parma, Suttirol, and especially in our youth academy system. So that's a player that I'm not surprised about, but I was surprised about the maturity how we spoke to the microphones. It was the first time for him with us on Twitch. He's 23, born in 2000. Mamma mia. Educated, polite, smart. He impressed me a lot of time with questions that I asked him that I was absolutely not expecting these answers, I will tell you. Some funny moments as well with Moise Keen, with the grandfather that we prepare for him as kind of surprises. So let's start. I don't know if you already put a maximum of like. I don't know if you like these kinds of videos after the live that I'm taking the time to translate them for you because maybe you missed it or you say, Beppe, we already read it somewhere. Someone translated it. You don't need to do it. So I love to do it. So let me know if you like it or not. If yes, maximum of like. If you didn't yet, please subscribe to the channel because we start. Of course, I start asking him about Empoli Juve. He stouts about it and he said, okay, we won. Good to win, that was important. I saw the team doing really well against an Empoli that, pay attention, is a strong team, especially up front, they have really great players. I asked him about that fantastic goal of Federico Chiesa. Did you think that he would stay on the ground or do you, were you thinking at that specific moment that he would set up? He said, look, I don't know because I saw him falling on the ground. He could stay there. But I know Federico Chiesa that much that I was sure that he would find the strength to get up and to go for scoring. So that was a really beautiful answer from Hans. Then, of course, I spoke about the victory. Was it important before the national break? He said, absolutely, yes. It's always important to win before national break. But let's say that every single win is important. It's always important to win. So perfect answer. I'm ask, I ask him about the social media, he's saying I'm not using them that much, I don't want to communicate too much about my myself about it, but on the other side, it's fantastic to read sometimes the beautiful compliment that people are saying, and when people are writing me on message, on direct message, I if I have the opportunity, I take the time also to, to thank them. So, beautiful, the relationship with social media, not too much focus, but still taking the time to appreciate the love that he received from the fans. The number 41, 
hey, you know, that that's my kind of BEP equation. I always want to know about why a player is taking a certain number. So I said, why the number 41? And he said, well, I love, I'm a big lover of the number 14 for multiple reasons. For example, my sister is born on the day 14, but also it's of one of my idols, Johan Cruyff. And if you are reversing 14, the 14 becomes 41. At the time when I was uh, starting with the first team, Matuidi had that number, today it's Milik. So it was natural for me to take again the number that I debuted it in first team with, 41, and for all these kind of reasons. So big fan of uh, Johan Cruyff. We asked also why, because of course, it's a different generation. He said, my sister is living in Amsterdam. A lot of time I went to visit her in Amsterdam, discovering the streets, the way of living in Amsterdam, the stadium, also his house, uh, and learning about the story. Someone that changed how we understand football today on the field as a player, but then also as a manager. And you know, I made a small game because of course I already know, knew before the interview that his favorite player was Cruyff, that his number 41 was in homage of Johan Cruyff. I asked him, look, there are three different quotes from Johan Cruyff. I will tell them to you, listen to them, and then you choose the favorite one you have. One, two, three, and you know what he did? And that's something that I really like, maybe more than all the other things. He said, no, I love all of them, but there is a fourth one that I really love, and that's my favorite one. And out of memory, like this, he's telling me the quote. So when he say it's in honor of Johan Cruyff, I really like Johan Cruyff, it's my idol, it's not just like this, it's, it's my idol, okay, I want to know the person, I really want to understand the person. So it shows really someone that is invested in something, that wants to know the details, the story behind, and that's something that I really like. You know it. When I tell you, when you hear something, when you read something, do your investigation, try to go deeper than just the surface. So that's something that I really liked. I asked him also about the tournée in USA, that pre-season tournée, he said I felt really well. Uh, I knew already about USA, but I had not the opportunity yet to go in tournée in USA with the team. I believe that there I always showed that I was able to stay in first team and that I deserved the permanence in Juventus. Uh, super happy about the trust that the club and also the mister gave to me. And I want, of course, to repay that trust. We played against important teams, even if they were friendlies. But I think that it was a really important experience for me also to grow even more. Then the question, what is your favorite position? Yeah, because we don't know at the moment, is it Mezzala, is it Regista, on the left, on the right? And he said, look, I feel myself really well in every single position of the midfield, that you put me as a Mezzala, as a Regista, as a play, three-man midfielder, two-man midfield. Of course, these positions are totally different and you need to understand them, but I am able to do whatever position in the midfield, of course, it will be the coach that will decide where I have to enter and where I have to play. I love, because we asked about his qualities, I love also to go with free kicks, he loves taking the free kicks, and also taking shots to the goal, taking his chance to shot on the goal, especially from outside of the box. He has a really good resistance, so he can really resist with his body, and uh, he learned to manage the moments of the game. I also add some other things to him, to his skills, where he agreed on. But he said, I'm a player and every single player, they never finish learning. They always try to become better and to become perfectionist. And that's the moment where Grabi, that is his ex-coach from the U team, he entered the chat on Twitch, asking him some questions and telling him some questions, telling him also that when he was a kid, until his youth, he said he was really severe on himself. He was really strong on himself. Perfectionist, let's say. And he said, yes, he's a person that helped me really a lot. He trained me so many years and helped me so much also during my injury. So it's a person that I really appreciated. Like Milani, Milani that entered also in the chat, also an ex-coach from uh, the youth sector. And he said, you know, these two persons were, really, were really nice to me. And that was really beautiful to see also the managers of Juve entering the chat to tell him the beautiful things of his uh, youth. So the attachment with your youth coach is still there. And that's beautiful. It's like a big family anyway. Um, 
they also both of them the coaches they were telling him you know is it important for you to have that sense of belonging because you know it he's there since eight years old and he's a juventino we have a lot of juventini now in our team locatelli fagioli we have a lot Nicolosi is also Juventino, since a kid, always has been. And he said, you know, when you're feeling that shirt on you, when I started in 2008, we are now in 2023, you feel more, you are feel more attached, you want to give even more for it. So beautiful, eh? the, the human side, understanding of Juventus and so on and so on. Look, uh, then we spoke about uh, his other inspirations on top of Johan Cruyff, that is his idol, Frankie de Jong. Kimmich and De Bruyne, that he said is the most complete of all of them. I got some beautiful examples. Eh? De Jong, Kimmich and De Bruyne. Can you do better in terms of inspiration for a midfielder? When we spoke about players from Juventus, he said, Paul Pogba, ragazzi, you can't believe what we see in training session. When Paul Pogba is there in training session, doing his things, it's incredible. And he also said, I was there. At the first goal of Paul Pogba, I was a kid. I was, you know, the ones that are taking the balls and putting them again in the field. He was there against Napoli when Paul scored his goal. He said, phenomenal, crazy. I was in love with Paul Pogba as a kid and now training and sharing the locker room with him is just a fantastic experience. We spoke about his um, um, first debut with Juventus because he already debuted in 2019. He already played three games with Juve. He said it was one of the most biggest emotions of my life especially a moment where i subbed in someone that is moise keen his best friend they know each other since they are really kids in that youth sector they did everything together they know each other really well he said we are looking totally different in terms of behavior character and so on and so on but we understand that each other so much when i see him doing some gimmicks on the field or so on i know exactly what he's thinking so we have a fantastic beautiful relation since young then he gave us a bit of anecdotes of moise keen the first day that he arrived at juventus he was thinking it was only for the medicals and then it was also the training session moise keen didn't know so he had no football shoes with him and hans nicolucci with the one that is taking care of the locker room they were looking for some shoes for Moise Keane so that he could train also the first day. And he always said, uh, I knew immediately that he was a fantastic, great player. Moise Keane, that is not a guy that is speaking a lot. Well, he already sent me a video in the days before with a message for Hans Nicolussi. We showed him that message that was just really beautiful, emotional moment. But not only that was emotional. At a certain moment, we spoke about how he were, was introduced to the football world and he spoke about his grandfather that shared that passage with him that also there when he was living in the mountains in Val d'Aosta he created a mini football field for him he trained him in the beginning when he was six seven years old before going to Juve he said I, I need to give him a lot of credits what he didn't know of course is that I received from the grandfather already also a video, a really emotional one, a really beautiful video from the grandfather, Nonno Francesco. And you saw it, I was really emotional. I tell you the truth, I was also emotional when I saw that I, I had a little tear in my eye because these are beautiful moments. You know, the grandfather with his little steps and, the, you know, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. You know, that's football. That's really football. Um, he spoke about the family. He spoke about a lot of things, about his passions. He loves to read. He loves to play piano. Uh, it's someone that in the last few years discovered new passions like bi a bicycle, but also golf. We saw a picture of him playing golf. I didn't ask him if he was as great as Pavel Nedved, but maybe uh, next time I will be able to do it. He spoke also about the loans that were super important to Suttirol, to Sarnitana. He thanked the people there. We spoke about the goal that he scored when he was at Atal uh, against Atalanta with Sarnitana because he already scored in, uh, in, um, in Serie A. He said, super great, nice, but it was a half joy because unfortunately that game we lost. So it was a goal that was actually not important. I would love to score with Juve. And when I asked him, how do you dream your first goal of Juve? He said in two possible ways, or from the distance, so outside of the box, or who knows, maybe 
from a free kick. And then I told him, hey, then you will have to convince Dusan Vlaovic, of course, because Dusan Vlaovic is taking them there. So he's saying, you know, if Dusan is taking them on the right side of the field, I will take the ones on the right side. So I can't wait to see if this will happen one day. Um, the message to the supporters was also nice. He said thank you to all the supporters, to all the people that are there today in the chat, the ones that were there last Sunday and the other ones that will be there in the future. It is important. You are super important and you are always giving us that extra energy. I hope that they will continue to support us for the remaining part of the season because we will give everything for the shirt. When I asked him what we could wish him for the remaining part of the season he said look i'm happy that i stayed at juventus now of course i hope that i will receive the opportunities to show my values on the field so that's what i wish to hans nicolucci caviglia i tell you 40 minutes that now i try to translate in 15 that were really great but it's the human side that is interesting me a lot and i can tell you that uh, if i was already in love with how he played now I'm totally convinced also about the person. More 23 years balanced kids like Hans Nicolucci Caviglia that had a dream as a kid with a grandfather that tried to help him and is about to really make it real. We wish you the best, Hans. Thank you for all the people that were listening to the translation. Again, I hope you liked it. Grazie, forza. Juve. <laughs>